it uh, has been more than a month since uh, Russia attacked Ukraine. It's a full-scale invasion uh, to seize our territories and destroy our nation. I would even call it a genocide. Every day they bomb our cities, they destroy our infrastructure, not only military, but also they destroy houses, hospitals, schools, and grocery markets even. They want to leave us starving without gas, without infrastructure, without water and electricity. They want us to give up. They uh, kill civilians. Uh, for today, uh, they murdered 145 children and they rape us, they uh, murder, they torture us. But Ukrainian people don't give up. We've never been so united previously, but this war made the whole nation a whole big family. We defend our homes. We fight till death, even without weapons. Our people can, and they tried and they could stop Russians without weapons, just with their bravery. So uh, we won't give up and won't uh, let the enemy occupy our motherland. And uh, we are uh, just the last bastion holding back the Russian invasion uh, in Europe. We need the world's help to destroy uh, this great enemy, not only of Ukraine, but of the whole world, once and forever. Because as history shows, the USSR bastard will always try to absorb other countries and enslave free nations. Freedom and prosperity of other people is something that just doesn't let them live in peace. They can't sleep at night knowing that people, especially their neighbors, especially na nations whom they consider to be like younger brothers, live good and feel good and develop. But one moment. They are just kinds bastards because ukrainian people it's the elder brother because first was the kiev Rus, and then moscow appeared in 800 years after that and it really the fact that doesn't let them sleep good at night because they want to show the whole world that uh, they are uh, the great ancient nation uh, the center of European culture. They want to help Ukraine, to free Ukraine. And you all can see how they free us. They free us from happiness, from prosperity, from health and wealth. They free us from our homes, from our families and from our lives. And we won't ever give up and they won't be ever forgiven. So I really appreciate all the help we receive from the whole world, from all the people all over the world supporting Ukrainian army, supporting Ukrainian refugees, because this war is not only Ukrainian war, it's the whole world just trying to stand for freedom and a possibility to live our own lives and to choose our own way, way how to develop our country. Thank you for those uh, important words. Let's then talk about music. Could you tell me a bit about how you started this and what is your musical background? Okay, so uh, City Saturn was founded in October 2015. Uh, that time I had a very deep depression. Uh, I'd rather say it was existential crisis. And uh, in my heaviest moments, uh, music appeared in my head and I decided to record it. Uh, the first song I composed was Cold Silence. 
And after instrumental was finished, uh, I thought about inviting a guest vocalist for extreme vocals. But then I thought, thought, oh, I could try to do it myself and why not? So I attended private lessons and later could uh, record vocals myself. And that was really enjoyable for me. I, I really love it. Uh, before Sidu Satrum, I played in um, I played bass guitar in a duck wave industrial uh, band at Ram, but unfortunately um, there are no any records. The latest album Spiral of Life has already gotten some very nice reviews, but how would you describe that album in your own words? Spiral of Life uh, for me it's a journey through life, death, and eternity. Uh, it's a chance to realize that our soul is uh, immortal and we just live life after life in order to gain experience, to learn uh, to love even in death. And uh, I also, uh, musically, I wanted to make some experiments in this album with my voice, with, with some instruments, and um, I think I did it successfully. I lived the emotions uh, described in Spiral of Life and let them pass through. For example, there are two songs uh, dedicated to my grandmother who died a few years ago. These are Breath of Agony and Farewell. So um, I loved her very much. She was one of my dearest uh, people and um, I suffered a lot knowing that soon sh uh, she would die uh, I had a chance to visit her in the last day of her life and you know it's really great when you have a chance for farewell with those who, whom you love I didn't have that chance with my grandfather and this is a thing that makes me suffer and makes my heart bleeding so when you just have a conversation not knowing that it's for the last time in this life and you haven't ever told that you love someone that you really appreciate and care and then next day this person dies it's it's really painful so you know after that i appreciate a possibility of farewell. So um, the time I lived in another city, I lived in Kiev, and um, knowing that probably my grandmother was living the last hours, I took a bus to Cherkasy. On that way, I composed lyrics uh, of farewell. It was just an idea that. It, it was composed in um, five or ten minutes. And uh, after I held uh, her hand, hugged her for the last time and said how much I loved her, I composed music. That's uh, the only my song with music and lyrics composed in one day, but it was very emotional, painful day for me, but also the day full of love. In a few hours after that, um, she had the agony and her agony lasted for 13 or 14 hours before her last breath. So I saw it, I heard it, it will always hurt and breath of agony is about those last hours and the last wheel of a dying to see the beloved ones, to hear their voices for one last time. She called my name, she refused to die till seeing me for the last time in her mortal life. And that's what um, the words, uh, my lovely faces uh, forgotten, if only I could see them one more time. My native voices uh, omitted in tomb like silence calling your name it was all about her because you know she had the alzheimer disease 
not recognized her relatives um, during last month, but just one day before death, my grandmother's memory came back and she recognized everyone and she called my name. And even when she didn't recognize every, uh, anyone, she called my name, not knowing who, whom was I, but knowing that I'm the one beloved. She called my name. She called my name till death. So <laughs> now you know how I <laughs> compose my music and lyrics and where I take inspiration. <laughs> well, not, not all my songs are so painful. For example, Sea of Life. Um, it was a song with uh, music composed first, and I thought, oh, I need hmm, how to be better arrange the lyrics. And then I was, um, I had vacation in Greece at the seaside. The sea was uh, rather stormy those days, but I just ignored these because. I really adore swimming very, very far. It's some kind of meditation for me to swim as far as my strength uh, lets me. And after that, I just come back and uh, that uh, a will to survive always let me to get to the <laughs> shore. So uh, on my last day at the sea, it was like a, a flash. I composed lyrics of Sea of Life. I understood that our life is just like the sea. Sometimes it's very calm, sometimes it's stormy, but even if it's stormy, we have to try not to be drowned. We have to catch waves. We have to be strong and um, to see the right moment, moments uh, for actions, like in the stormy sea. And that's what our life is. It's a sea. How do you see the future of Sidusatrum at the moment? Well, uh, before the war started, I recorded a single. Uh, it's my first um, song in Ukrainian. Um, and I started recording the third album. Uh, it had to be an experimental concept album, much more avant-garde and experimental than was Spiral of Life. I had ideas about some uh, new instruments, uh, about more experience with uh, vocals, um, with different sound effects. I can't even say what style it could be, but I just wanted to do what, what I wanted. <laughs> but then this all shit happened. Um, I hope that uh, soon we win the war. I will be able to come back home because now I'm not at. I'm not home. Um, I'm without my soft, without my instruments. I have many, many ideas. Again, music playing in my head, but at the moment, I can do almost nothing. I can record music, but just in a simple way, just to keep it and uh, proceed working with it when I come back home. And uh, what I must say that, um, well, the concept has changed and uh, my next album will be much more heavy, much more painful than it was planned before the war. Um, I was also thinking to play a few lives uh, before um, war with session musicians. And um, I hope that uh, one day I will do it because it, it would be interesting for me. I'd, I'd love to do it. And I receive uh, many requests from fans asking if it's possible to see me live. So hope one day this will happen. <laughs> 